Hey guys, uh, my name is Johnny, and you are watching Hillbilly Modeling. Uh, first things first, uh, I'm going to be taking a little trip, so uh, might be a couple of weeks before I post again, but uh, never fear, I'll be right back. Even hillbillies take a little bit of a vacation every now and then. <laughs> so, um, this, this is going to be part six of our M113 uh, Armored Personnel Carrier build by Tamiya. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started on that. So in our last video, uh, we painted up everything. Uh, however, we do need to clear coat this stuff. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and prepare everything uh, for getting that coat of clear coat on uh, all of our parts. Uh, and this will be a gloss clear coat that we're going to be putting on uh, because that's going to be very, very important in our next step. So here we have our Tamiya X22, and uh, I have it marked Mix uh, on the top of the bottle. It lets me know that I have it thinned, uh, and that's a clear gloss acrylic. And you can only thin this Tamiya paint here with this X20A. Now there may be some other uh, thinners that you could use too, but I think it's best just to stick with Tamiya. Um, when you're using Tamiya paints, uh, that way you don't have anything too awfully unexpected, maybe. <laughs> so. So what we're going to do is just lay down uh, a couple of good coats of this. Uh, it, this is really going to seal that flat paint uh, and it's going to allow a much better and smoother application of our uh, panel liner and it'll make cleanup a lot easier too. And I know uh, in a lot of these videos uh, a lot of times people don't uh, really explain uh, why we use a different, you know, different types of paints like acrylic versus enamels and why we use them for different uh, applications. So I'll go ahead and break that down because uh, I know there's a lot of uh, beginning modelers out there or those of you that have returned to modeling after uh, a long break and it might be a little bit confusing. So typically we use our acrylics to get our color and uh, enamels, or at least this is the way I do it. I use the enamels for the panel liner and for weathering and, and things like that. So the benefit there is that the enamels don't react uh, with the acrylic paints once they are dried and cured. And also uh, we can use the acrylics to seal in whatever work that we did before in the enamel. Especially if you're going to use several enamel products and you're going to layer them one over the other. You don't want to wipe out a previous step. Say your panel liner, uh, you don't want that to bleed out or mix with uh, your weathering uh, products if they're enamel too. And so we'll put a coat of acrylic in between those. Then that's going to protect that. So that's why we do this, this little dance that we do here with uh, the acrylic versus the enamel stuff. Now once we've given uh, our acrylic uh, clear coat enough time to dry, we're going to use our panel liner to help bring out those little details. And it's going to be really kind of hard to see uh, on this particular model because the paint is dark. But it will help create uh, those little shadows, uh, kind of little false shadows that helps bring those small items to life a little bit. And just like in the previous videos in this series, I'm going to be using a uh, long bristle, really pointed brush to apply that uh, uh, panel liner. Uh, the long bristles will hold a lot of product for us, so hopefully we, we don't have to keep going back to the well as often. Uh, once we get that uh, brush loaded up nicely there, um, and then we, with it uh, being such a pointed brush, we'll be able to actually target the areas a lot better than, say, the applicator brush that comes with the uh, panel liner. Uh, because if you're not careful, you can really make a mess of this. But now our gloss clear coat that we put on that is going to really aid in the uh, cleanup of this. It makes it really easy to uh, get excessive amounts of panel liner uh, off of the, uh, the model and clean that up nice and tight. 
as well as uh, aiding that panel liner in wicking around those details. And that's kind of important because that uh, gives us less opportunity <laughs> to make little ugly spots that we're going to have to clean up later. And while we're doing our panel liner, it's a good idea to go ahead and do everything that, that's going to need it, which is probably every part that we've painted. <laughs> we're going to do our road wheels, of course. Um, I think there's like 10 sets of these. And then we have our two uh, idlers. And we'll get those as well. Now, once our panel liner has dried, uh, we can clean up those little ugly spots uh, where maybe the brush tip uh, didn't quite get down into the little corner where we wanted it. And so I'm just going to use a clean brush uh, dipped in a little bit of enamel thinner. Now, you, you don't want um, the, uh, the brush to be really wet, just kind of damp. You, you kind of get the feel of it. Uh, how much you need and that'll just clean those edges up and and I know with this dark paint it's really hard to see what I'm doing uh, it was hard for me to see what I was doing so um, just make sure that you go over the entire model and a lot of times it's best to uh, kind of walk away from it once you think you're done and come back and look at the model again uh, and you'll see that there are areas that you missed the first go around uh, and just make sure that you get those because once you put uh, a top coat over top of this enamel product say the acrylic flat clear which is what we're going to be using on it uh, it's going to be sealed in it's done okay it's not coming off after that so now we're going to be using uh, this metallic gray by Tamiya this XF uh, 56 to show the uh, wire marks on say our idlers here um, it's got a nice metallic look to it uh, that's not too bright now you wouldn't want to use a chrome or a bright silver or something like that in this kind of area because there's a lot of dirt and grit and stuff that gets kind of ground into the metal uh, making the metal a little bit pitted it's not going to be polished um, and because of that, uh, it's going to have a slightly flatter and darker appearance um, than, uh, than a, a sharp edge that's been rubbed uh, would have. So we're going to use this, uh, this metallic gray here for, for that. And we're just going to paint up our, um, our idlers with it. And also, we'll be hitting uh, our drive sprockets as well. And that's going to be on those areas where the teeth on the drive sprockets are going to engage our tracks. And so we're going to want to make sure that we put those wear areas in uh, on these drive sprockets. So with that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our instructions again. Time to decide what type of decals or decals, if you prefer, that you'd like to put on the vehicle, which version. And I'm going to do this one right here. I kind of like the look of that big number 214 there. And uh, kind of different. So let's do that. Of course, uh, whenever you're using your, your decals, uh, <laughs> you really need to cut, cut them loose from the main sheet. And just uh, use one decal at a time. So these decals are... Uh, uh, water slide type decals. They're not rub transfer types. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a model kit that had the uh, transfer type uh, that I've ever done. But I haven't done a, a large variety of uh, different manufacturers as of yet. But uh, we're going to do that. Uh, the, the thing is, is with these big numbers. Now you, you might, uh, if you're good with a pair of scissors or with your hobby knife, uh, uh, be really adapt at uh, being able to cut these numbers apart. I'm not so good with it. I would make a mistake. So I'm just going to leave it like Tamiya uh, printed it up on that one large sheet uh, piece there. Now that does mean that we have a lot of clear areas uh, that's going to be on the vehicle. So we're going to really want to make sure that something this large has plenty of uh, uh, micro set underneath it 
And then also, if you have to refloat it, uh, just go ahead and put it around the edges just to make sure uh, that it will slide because it's not going to slide onto the dry painted area too well. But you do want to be careful and make sure that you get everything lined up correctly. And I find it useful to uh, use my little steel rule just to measure down and make sure that uh, we're in place uh, right where we want to be. Now, as you can see, I did go ahead and temporarily affix the uh, side skirts into place with just a little bit of uh, Tamiya mass tape. Uh, that way, <laughs> I didn't get this uh, rather large uh, decal uh, too low on the vehicle, and we wouldn't want that. Now, once we get all of our decals on and they're, they've all completely dried, we're going to go ahead and pull off uh, our side skirt again here and put that down out of the way and just want to check to make sure that we don't need to go back over. Now you can see these decals are really thick, uh, but we just want to make sure that we don't need to go back over these and uh, uh, just in case there's some silvering or something that we might need to address. Uh, but these actually went down pretty good. Uh, they look really great. So I think we're in good shape there. Now the only problem that we have is that the decals are rather bright. <laughs> I guess is a way to say it. So I do a little bit of sponge chipping here with our base color. Uh, just over that bright yellow uh, numbers there. And just ever so little on our other smaller decals. Not too much. You know, you don't want to paint them out, of course, but we do want it to make look make it look like it has been used. Not abused, but, but used. Next up, we're going to start working on our tracks. So these are molded in black plastic, but uh, one of the things that we need to do is go ahead and lay down a good rust color. And so what I'm going to use is this red rust. Now this is a craft paint. <laughs> you probably could have guessed that. But uh, the uh, craft paint is mixed for my uh, airbrush. And I am using uh, the uh, Vallejo uh, acrylic airbrush thinner for that. And we'll go ahead and spray up our tracks. Now once we get our tracks all sprayed up and, they've, and they're dried with the rust color, we're going to use this flat steel. Uh, enamel paint by testers. We're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. Uh, what we really want to do is just bring out the sharp edges uh, on the tracks and also the center guide horns. We're going to want to make sure that uh, those are kind of polished up a little bit uh, because there wouldn't be any rust on the road contact areas or anywhere where the metal part of the shoe has been scraping around in the dirt and gravel and rock and what have you and of course the guide teeth where they run in between the road wheels uh, there's not going to be any rust on that part either now all of our little track pads here <laughs> that are on the uh, uh, on our track shoes uh, these are the pads that make contact with the ground however they are made out of rubber so I am coming back in with the uh, original uh, flat black Vallejo acrylic paint that we had mixed up to prime the vehicle in in the previous video. And uh, we're just going to go over these pads and paint every single one of them black. Now I know that seems like a whole lot, but as you can see here, they actually paint up rather quickly. It doesn't take very long to do, and the paint is so thin that uh, we're just giving a impression uh, that these pads are, uh, are rubber. So it, it, it is time consuming, but I think it's really going to help bring together the, the look of the tracks on the vehicle. So it's well worth the time. And as you can see here, uh, I really think it's well worth it because uh, there's a big difference between the ones that are painted and the ones that aren't. So that's going to look really good. Okay, so back to the paint booth. And we're going to be sealing everything in with this Model Masters Flat uh, Acrylic Clear. And uh, it's my favorite flat. 
so uh, we're going to use it until it's all gone. Because uh, as you may know, uh, Model Masters is out of business. So we're going to go ahead and seal everything up and protect all of our work with this. Now with our flat clear coat all nice and dry, it's time to go ahead and install our tracks. But we want to make sure that we get our tracks going in the correct direction because uh, they do point in a specific direction direction you can see there's a flat edge and a nub and there's that nub actually points up as viewed from the front of the vehicle so we want to make sure when we put our tracks on that we don't get our tracks on backwards because well somebody's not going to let us live it down <laughs> if that happens uh, so all we got to do is feed our track in and we are going to have to turn our drive sprocket to get that track to feed in over top of and it is a pretty tight fit there if you don't have it on the uh, sprocket teeth. So it's kind of slow going here, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get them on. So next up we need to put all of our uh, road wheels. almost forgot what they were called. Uh, road wheels and also our idler. Uh, we'll put that in place as well. And then we'll be able to go ahead and connect the track. But the actual... Uh, connecting of this track back together is, uh, well, it's really hard to do. <laughs> the, the parts are very difficult to get to snap into place, but it works out fine. So I will do that off a of camera. And here's what we look like uh, with our tracks installed. I really do like these uh, AFV Club uh, aftermarket tracks. Uh, they, I think they really look much better than what it would have looked like had we used the uh, rubber band tracks that come with the kit. So once our tracks are installed, we can go ahead and install our side skirts here. And we just I'm just going to be using the uh, medium CA glue to do that. Just very carefully putting that glue right on the edge uh, where the skirts mate to the vehicle. I don't really want anything to squeeze out above that. Uh, because if we do, then we're going to have a little bit of cleanup, which is no big deal. We can do that, and we may have to put a little bit of, uh, go back to the paint booth and spray over it. Uh, we don't want it real nice and shiny there um, if that happens. So the, uh, the Model Master Flat Clear would dull that right down for us, and it wouldn't even be noticeable. And while we got the CA glue out, we can go ahead and start attaching the other little accessories that we have on the vehicle. Um, here we're going to put on our driver's hatch. Uh, just use a little bit of CA glue for that. And we'll go ahead and attach our commander's uh, hatch on the commander's cupola as well. A little bit of CA glue for that one and just carefully put that into place. So we are going to be using some dry pigments here for rust effects for like our exhaust and uh, also on our spare track shoes that are bolted to the front of the vehicle. And these Vallejo pigments come in a, uh, in a kit and you can get the whole variety of them uh, and be able to use these. Uh, I, I use them a lot. I really enjoy using them. Uh, I like to take a brush and actually apply this with just a little bit of water and that, that really helps me to target uh, exactly where it is that we're going to put uh, our rust and as you can see here since it's wet you can't really tell what's going on uh, but if you watch carefully uh, as I continue to paint on these pigments uh, using the water as the carrier for them uh, you'll see them at, they're starting to dry out and they're starting to be a lot more visible and it happens actually just that quick. Uh, so one side is already almost dry uh, and then we can go back and fill in any areas where uh, we would uh, where we missed and we'd like to fill that in. Now the center of these shoes I'm gonna leave black because the rubber was actually molded right into the shoe itself uh, on the uh, road wheel side of the track and it is not replaceable uh, on the real vehicle but uh, we're just going to leave that part black to kind of simulate uh, the rubber shoe right there. Or the rubber portion of the shoe, I should say. 
And we're also going to do the same thing uh, with our exhaust. Uh, if you remember from the painting video, we painted that with, uh, uh, I think it was the Model Masters Rust that we used there. Uh, but adding these little pigments uh, will help bring it out. And I'm just using the rust and old rust pigments here um, to actually bring out the uh, a little bit of variation there in the rusted surface. And we'll go in with a little bit of the black as well to put a little, just a little bit of soot uh, around the exit uh, of the pipe. And uh, when it comes to using these pigments, uh, the next thing you should do to fix them into place, uh, if it's like you like, you know, and it looks, it looks okay, then uh, just use a little bit of enamel thinner. And that very little bit of enamel thinner will uh, fix them... Uh, pretty pretty good for you I mean if you rub on it really hard you can you could get the uh, pigments back off but uh, the enamel thinner will help set that so that you don't have that powdery uh, substance that is easy to rub off so we didn't really get everything done that I'd hoped to get done in this video but uh, we put a pretty good dent uh, in it I guess uh, we still yet have to do our figures, and we still have to do uh, the exterior of the vehicle weathering, as well as the uh, floor plates and the ramp uh, with the ramp down. We're going to kind of muddy all that up because, of course, um, you know, vehicle with the troops coming in and out, there's going to be dust and mud and all that stuff uh, that's going to collect wherever the troops are walking. And they'll just carry that right in. But I still think that we're making pretty good progress. Okay, so I guess that will wrap up part six of our M113 Armored Personnel Carrier build. And I didn't get quite as much done as I'd like to. Uh, but, you know, modeling for me anyway is uh, more about the journey than it is the destination. But <laughs> never fear, we're going to get to the end of this one sooner or later. <laughs> so, uh, special thanks, guys, to uh, all of my subscribers and all my viewers. Uh, it's because of you guys that uh, I keep building uh, these kits and showing you what I'm doing. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, hopefully, maybe today, I uh, earned that subscription. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like. I'd appreciate that. Uh, it kind of helps the algorithm push the videos out a little bit more to uh, a broader audience, uh, especially to modelers in particular. So uh, that would be helpful. Uh, so I'm going on my trip, and uh, I will see you guys when I get back. Thanks for watching.